Assalamu alaikum. I hope you guys are good. Okay, so in this video, we are going to talk about some NUST NT test past paper questions which are related to the topic trigonometric identities. Now it is quite self explanatory since the topic is trigonometric identities. It certainly means that time and again for every question, I repeat, for every question, I'll be referring to a trigonometric identity. So this means that if you're watching this video and if you are, uh, you know, solving those questions, it's very, very important to either first memorize all the identities or at least keep that table in front of you just so you know how to apply those identities, right? Okay, so let's get started. I'll zoom in a bit just so it's um, bigger. Yeah. Okay, now let's talk about the very first question. Okay, so first question is tan A plus B equals. Now tan A plus B equals is basically a um, trigonometric identity where we know that tan alpha plus beta equals tan alpha plus tan beta divided by 1 minus tan alpha tan beta, okay? So I will write it down just so it is more understandable. So tan alpha plus beta. Now, usually in the identities, we use alpha and beta, but in questions, you will see A and B, okay? So I think by now you should be uh, good enough to understand that A and alpha and B and beta is completely fine. Like we can replace variables. Okay, so it is tan alpha plus tan beta divided by 1 minus tan alpha tan beta. So obviously we have a plus sign in numerator and we have a minus sign in denominator. So it is C option. Okay, so again, as I told you, time and again, we will be applying different identities and that is how we would be able to solve questions easily. Okay, let's talk about the second question. Cos pi by 2 minus theta. Now, although that some students would know, would be knowing the answer, if not directly, then obviously I can write this whole thing as cos theta minus pi by 2 and I can take minus sign common right and we know we know that I'll write this here cos minus theta equals cos theta so since this is cos minus theta minus pi by 2 this is equal to cos theta minus pi by 2 right and some students know that this is sine theta because it is again um, a formula and this would be the answer but I am the type of teacher who never ever encourages students to memorize things especially when we talk about mathematics obviously I know you have to memorize things and this, especially for NET you will have to memorize a lot of things because they would not give you a data booklet or a formula sheet like A levels or O levels so you should be very clear about that but it is important that you don't memorize everything. It's important that you learn the concepts and, you know, apply it, uh, them there and then. So, why is cos theta minus pi by 2 equals sine theta? Because, let's say, this is sine. Let's say this is sine theta's curve. And let's say this is cos theta curve. Okay. Now this is 2 pi. This is 2 pi again. This is pi by 2. And this is pi. Okay. Now we can see that sine pi is 0 and cos pi by 2 is 0. So there's a difference of pi by 2 in both the graphs, right? And that is obvious from this formula as well. For example, if I say that theta is pi, so cos pi 
minus pi by 2 would be equal to sin pi. And yes, that is true. Pi minus pi by 2 is pi by 2. And cos pi by 2 equals sin pi. And both these are 0. Cos pi by 2 is 0. It's obvious from here. And sin pi is 0. It is obvious from here, right? So this is a formula. We know that at times we don't have this much time to refer to graphs, obviously. But still, you should know, be knowing the underlying concept. The difference in cos and sine curve is of pi by 2. So B would be the answer. Okay. Now let's talk about the third one. Cos A minus cos B equals, again, this is a trigonometric identity. We know that cos alpha minus cos beta is minus 2 sine alpha plus beta divided by 2 into sine alpha minus beta divided by 2. So D is the answer. And I repeat, you have no choice. You need to know all these identities. Only then you would be able to do all these questions. Okay. Right. So D is the answer. Let's talk about the fourth question. Okay. Now, cos A equals either 1, that is minus cos square A by 2 minus sine square A by 2 or 2, that is 2 cos square A by 2 minus 1 or 3, that is 1 minus 2 sine square a by 2. Now, again, I need to refer to some trigonometric identities, which I have, just so I can solve this question. Okay. Now, they are saying that cos a equals 2, right? So, let's do the fourth question here. Okay. So, I know that sin alpha by 2 equals under root 1 minus cos alpha divided by 2. This cos alpha made me use this because we are interested in cos A. So let's try making this the sub, uh, the, let's try making cos alpha the subject. So I'll take square on both sides. This and this could be cancelled. I'll take 2 to that side. This will give me 2 sine square alpha by 2 equals 1 minus cos alpha. I can take cos alpha there and I can take this term here. So finally, I'm going to get cos alpha equals 1 minus 2 sine square alpha by 2. Okay, so this is 3. Okay, so 3 certainly is the answer. This means that a cannot be the choice because A option says 1 only and C cannot be the choice because C option says 1 and 2 only, right? So 3 is the answer. So the answer could be B or D. Let's see if 2 is the answer or not, right? So we have another trigonometric identity that basically is cos alpha by 2 equals under root 1 plus cos alpha by 2. So this means that again, I'll square both sides. This would be cancelled. I'll take 2 there. This will give me 2 cos square alpha by 2 minus 1 equals cos alpha. So this is 2, right? So B is the answer. Okay. B is the answer, right? And again, it could be that D is the answer, but since there's no trigonometric identity, I don't have any trigonometric identities with which when I play, I get this, right? Either I will get 2 or I will get 3. So 2 and 3 is the answer. Okay, now let's talk about the fifth question. So we have sine theta minus sine pi. Okay, now we have two sines with different angles and they are being subtracted. So again, we need to, th obviously, when you'll be sitting in exam or while preparation, you will have multiple tables coming to your mind that, okay, is it the double angle um, 
formula or is it the half angle formula or is it the addition formula and stuff like that right so it is cos theta uh, it is sin theta minus sin phi so it is difference to product formulas right this is difference and this difference would be basically a product so the answer would be we have minus so this is going to be a 2 cos alpha plus beta by 2 sin alpha minus beta by 2 right so in general we know that sin alpha minus sin beta is 2 cos alpha plus beta by 2 into cos alpha minus beta by 2 right so this is basically a option the only difference is in alpha and beta we have different angles there and that is completely fine right so we call them difference to product formulas right now this was a difference of sign with different angles and we need to refer to a product right so a is the answer okay Yes, uh, this is sign basically. So A is the answer. Okay. Let's talk about the sixth question. Cause, uh, sorry, sine A plus B into sine A minus B, right? Now this is a bit familiar. And like we know that we will be uh, first expanding sine A plus B and then multiplying with sine A minus B and let's see how things work, okay? So let's do it here. Let's do it here, in fact. Okay, so it is sine A plus B is sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. This is sine A plus B. And if I talk about sine A minus B, that is the same. The only difference is of sine, okay? And again, we can think about it as A plus B multiplied by A minus B, right? Because this is same as this and this term is same as this, right? So if we do... a plus b into a minus b we get a square minus b square so i will get sine a cos b whole square minus cos a sine b whole square okay so this is what i'm getting and so far i am not close to the answer this is not the answer. So we need to make more changes, right? So I can write it as sine square A cos square B minus cos square A and sine square B. And now instead of sine square, I can write 1 minus cos square A into cos square B minus cos square A. And instead of sine square B, I can write 1 minus cos square B. Now I have to multiply and I will get cos square B minus cos square A cos square B minus cos square A plus cos square A cos square B. These two terms would be cancelled and I have 
cos square b minus cos square a so this would be the answer right again this question was very simple i personally saying i i've been teaching so students most of the students are familiar with these um expansions right like they know what sign a plus b would be and what sign a minus b would be but that is not the only thing if you know that after that you should know that a plus b into a minus b is a square minus b square and then we have to expand it simplify it and then we get the answer right so again i have been telling you guys some questions would be very simple they would require um, some seconds or so but there would be some questions for which you will at least need 2 minutes or 2 and a half minutes right so time allocation is very important okay let's talk about the seventh question okay so tan theta by 2 now this is a property we know that tan theta by 2 equals under root 1 minus cos theta divided by 1 plus cos theta so this is property and c would be the answer <clears throat> okay now if i talk about the eighth one it is cos alpha plus cos beta as i told you initially we did difference to product formula in which we had sin this time around we have sum to product formula like this is sum we have uh, cos alpha plus cos beta this is obviously a sum and this is equivalent to a product but what product exactly this product right this is equal to 2 cos alpha plus beta by 2 into cos alpha minus beta by 2 okay so there's a plus here there's a minus here and obviously that is the only difference in all the options obviously some of the options have cos sin cos sin cos sin and here we know that we only have cos but obviously these are small details which you need to memorize okay whatever way you do you have to memorize all this and only then you would be able to solve these questions correctly and yes obviously since uh, out of 200 questions mathematics like the maths portion is, is only of 80 questions so out of those 80 questions there would be i would say two to three questions from this section not every but still uh, and yes i agree that the questions which i um discuss here are some are very easy and some are difficult right so the difficulty level in exam would be normal one because here we are discussing uh, topic wise so obviously it could be that a topic is difficult so i you know compile all the difficult questions but if but in exam you will have a combination of different topics and different difficulty levels right so inshallah you guys would be able to do a good job there okay so that is it